Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixwest TV. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to another run of rapid fire Q&A. Before we start, if you like the channel, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, check the info box down below for my mixing courses, plug-in discounts if you want to support the channel, t-shirts down there, and we have a Patreon page. But let's get to what I already know is going to be a very heated topic. So this sound asks, when you go hybrid, it's important to get an external clock or can I just use the internal clock of my interface? So external clocks, one of the most esoteric, let's call it this way, piece of gear in studios. So I will, uh, I will give you my experience, my opinion on external clocks, and then I will link a very well done test by Sound on Sound on this. So for those not familiar, an external clock basically sync all your digital machines. Uh, usually it's used when you have a multi-converter setup. So you have multiple ADDA units and you want basically a master clock. One source that sends the same digital signals to all your digital machines and all your converters. So for example, I have my Motu Pre ES and then I have two SSL 24 channels for a total amount of 48 channels and two RME cards, which are the PC cards uh, connected to the SSL to connect the SSL to the computer. So in this case, my setup, which is not installed right now, is considered an advanced setup in which you could see uh, the use of a master clock. In order to digitize an analog signal, so to convert it from analog to digital, we need to sample at a very precise and regular intervals. If you have one or more converters in chain that are not perfectly synced, if the time clock varies even slightly, the audio could be recorded or reproduced or both at the wrong time. This causes distortion and noise. This diagram here shows how short-term timing variation between one clock period and the next can result in a distorted waveform if timing variations are random, the result is effectively added noise, whereas if the variation are periodic, additional atonal intermodulation artifacts can be added to the signal. These timing variations are referred to as jitter. In short, if you have a bad clock, timing variation will cause bad audio quality, so distortion and noise. Now, from my personal experience and many studies, many independent studies, including the one on Sound on Sound, I came to the conclusion that if you only have one converter, there is absolutely no reason to use a clock. And this is my personal experience. Not only it doesn't benefit, but it actually makes you worse. And funny enough, this test agrees with my personal findings. So if we take a look at this graph here, they tested the Behringer unit and the Behringer unit worked less well when clocked to a high quality external master clock than on its own inferior internal clock. In this other graph, a Focusrite 428 performed better on its own internal clock than on either of the two master clocks tested. Here we have an Apogee PSX100 was synced to two external clocks and again the result was worse than on its own internal clock. This one is interesting. When testing the Prism Sound Orpheus, one of the arguably one of the best converters in the world, there was no difference in performance when clocked with a very expensive external clock than on its own. This is very interesting because it tells us that in the best case scenario, when you really spend a lot of money, you just don't make things worse, <laughs> which is, I will leave it at that and you will draw your conclusions. But my personal conclusions, as you probably figure out by now, is that when you have only one converter or one interface, it's always better to leave that one unit, the unit that actually does the conversion, being the clock, the master clock. And if you do have multiple units like I have, I have three converters basically for a total amount of what, uh, 54 channels. Uh, in that case, it can be debated because there can be also jitters due to cables, the connectors, T-bar shaped connectors, and every unit needs to be in sync with the other. Now, before getting the Motu, I still have to test my system with the Motu in. Um, without having the Motu, I never had any problem having one of the SSL being the master clock for the other SSL. And because that's the unit that does the conversion. I could have the RME card doing the clock, 
Europa and RME, RME is, has great drivers, has great technology. But again, I found that if I leave the SSL, which is the unit that does the conversion being the master clock, it just sounds better, it's better. Now with the Moto in, I will try different, um, different setups. I will try the Moto being the master clock for everything else and we'll see how that works. But yeah, my advice, I think a uh, master clock could be useful in a multi ADDA setup. I personally don't use it. I tried a couple and I heard no difference whatsoever. Uh, so again, in the best case scenario, you just don't make things worse. So personally, I'm not convinced about having a master clock. Uh, some people swear by them. They change their lives. Um, I don't know <laughs> what to say about that. For um, home studios, project studios, mixing rooms, whether you're all in the box or hybrid, I don't think an external clock should be anywhere near your top 20 uh, to buy list. So that's my, <laughs> that's my take on it. I showed you some tests. I gave you my personal experience. I hope this answered the question. I hope this video was useful. If you liked it, please don't forget to leave a like. Please leave all your questions for both the rapid fire Q&A and the live stream Q&A. I will set it up soon, I promise. In the comment down below, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.